Hello, it's Writer Wednesday, and I am prepping for NaNoWriMo. Right now it's prep timber. Next month I'll be prepping as well, getting a head start on things. So this week we're going to go a little bit further into the mind mapping. I'm also going to show you how I kind of do some character mapping. I'm going to turn the camera around. What I'm doing here is working on my map, my brainstorm mind map for, for my novel. I'm looking up things, and then um, this is the backstory, and I've written some backstory about the grandmother, because she's the ghost. Um, the grandparents are the ghosts. They are who actually raised her. I was debating on names, actually using my own maiden name, because my family has a curse. <laughs> and I haven't yet decided, still not really sure, so... I'm right now writing down who they are in relationship to things. Um, birthdays, I'm figuring out how old they are, what year my novel is going to take place in. And then as I fill out these, and I have more of these, and I have other post-it notes, I will put those here, kind of like you do in Scribner's corkboard, until I get everything laid out. and post-it notes may change as I go through um, eventually they're going to be color coded I'm not at the color coding part yet because she's this is actually the main character and she will be in red but right now I'm concentrating on the ghost on some of the backstory so that's why that's in red right now I don't have colored post-it notes in every color that I have color coded for characters but family is usually purple for me in, uh, when I do my project. And blue is usually friends and things like that. Green is usually backstory and setting and um, things like that. And, um, and then I have like a different shade of blue. A lighter shade of blue are the friends and the entourage I should say and then a darker blue a pretty really dark blue is usually the love interest um, the antagonist I usually do as a gray or a black and what I may do is use index cards um, and color code those with markers for the ones that I don't have um, I'm still debating on things I may end up using index cards and color code all of them with markers but for now, I'm using the sticky backed post it notes that are index cards. I will leave a link to some of the products that I'm using in here. I use this pen to write on the post it notes, and I use my fountain pens to write in my notebook. So, so far, this is going pretty well. Like, I have a map of where I'm going, I have the names of the ghosts, I have a few other things listed. I'm still answering some of my questions. Still debating on her, whether she went to private school, some of the town's people um, that I want to include. I'm going to be making a list of those and working on a few other things. So I wanted to kind of show you what I'm doing right here so you can see that. And then this is where I'm going to be writing some of the information for the novel. I need to write some stuff down in here first. Like I said, I'm getting towards all of this. I really like how it's turning out so far. And I'm doing the planning so I can get all of that done. Because as we get further and further into the end of this month and next month, I'm going to be doing a lot more hardcore planning. People asked about tarot cards. The next video, I'm going to pull some tarot cards for characters. That's not really what I have scheduled, but I'm going to do that so that I can get further into what my characters are and information about them. But for now, I kind of wanted to show you, if you do something with post-it notes and you write down notes before you actually put it in your Scrivener project or in your notebook, for me, it doesn't matter so much in the Scrivener project because I can, you know, copy and paste and stuff like that there I can change things up but when I'm doing it this way I like to have before I even put stuff in the Scrivener project I like to have a good idea of where I'm going with things 
I can layer post-it notes. I can spread them out in a bigger spread. Right now, I'm trying to figure out backstory. So once I've got backstory for the main characters, I will move post-it notes or redo post-it notes, put them in. I may use the smaller version, put them in here and layer them until I get how I want the main characters and how they interact with each other. And then that way I have a pretty clear understanding. I've been doing the Pinterest board so far for South Carolina stuff. I haven't really done very much with characters on there yet because I'm getting ideas. I'm still formulating things like I don't know what color her hair is yet. I have a pretty good idea. I have a really good idea of what the grandmother looks like, but I haven't written anything down yet. I'm going to treat the characters when I do these post-it notes. I'm going to treat the setting as a character, sort of. Um, because it's going to play a big role like there are different pieces in the setting like a certain house that is going to be more prominent than other places I'm going to do a, a setting page and I will continue to show you things I'm also going to pull some tarot cards and I'm going to pull out and then I'm going to write information on the post-it notes and I will continue to do post-it notes as, as characters develop because I need to pull some character cards so that I can get ideas for other characters because I have a love interest I don't know anything about yet so I'm going to do that I'm going to pull archetype cards and then I'm going to pull tarot cards to get more information and that will be helpful and I am going to continue like I said to do my map here you know I have some pretty good ideas of, of what I want to do I'm not quite sure about like some things but I'm pretty sure about other things which is why I'm doing this ahead of time and why I think it's so important for me to get this done now rather than wait somebody asked me about writing books what I recommend anything other than Stephen King's on writing and to be honest it really depends on what you are interested in I use tarot for writers astrology for writers writers guide to character traits the emotional thesaurus I use a really old version of the Scribner handbook for writers I also like the writer's compass you know save the cat plot perfect was okay how to write killer fiction was pretty decent writing down the bones was really good but it's more like Stephen King's on writing it's more biographical or autobiographical I should say Planning Your Novel by Hardy was okay. The Marshall Plan is pretty good for some people. First Draft in 30 Days was pretty good. And there are quite a few others. I will make a list of the books that I, I thought were pretty good. Okay, so now that we've seen some of my backstory, how I map characters, and how I'm mapping the novel so I can get ideas, my handy dandy post-it notes, um, I'm going to tell you, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite books other than um, Stephen King's On Writing and um, Writing Down the Bones and things like that. So less autobiographical writing kind of books and more to the bones writing books. Self-editing for fiction writers, really good book. Um, I go through here sometimes when I'm making checklists for outlining and stuff because this is a really good way to make sure you cover some of the bases before you actually get to the editing point so you don't have to edit as much. This is not a how to write necessarily, but it's a really good book on writing. Watch out for the cuss words, <laughs> but um, I love it. It's one of my favorite writing books. The Wonder Book is one of my very favorite writing books it speaks to the writer and the artist to the creative person in me and I use this a lot for doing backstory and my world and stuff like that because I have a semi real semi fictional world it's kind of in the in between so I have to build some things overall though for regular writing books this is probably my favorite how to when it comes to writing for information and outlining and different things like that. This is one of my favorite books um, as far as that goes. So I thought I'd share that with you.
those are just some of. I will go into more depth and detail. Like I have Save the Cat, I have How to Write Killer Fiction, I have Plot Perfect, I have How to Write Your Novel in 30 Days, or First Draft in 30 Days, I think it is. And I also have Arwen's um, 30 Days to Finish Your Novel using Tarot and The Hero's Journey. And I will leave the links to some of those below. Some books I have on Kindle. So when it comes to using tarot cards to write, I have archetype cards. These are really good. I saw these in a video that Persephone Jones did, and I got myself some. So it comes with this book, and archetypes have been around since at least the time of Plato. Archetypes are psychological patterns derived from historical roles in life, such as the mother, the child, the trickster, the prostitute, the servant, initiation, death, rebirth, things like that. And you can use these cards to choose a card, study the light and shadow attributes listed on the card. For example, we have the rebel. Um, the rebel's light attributes are challenges authority, to affect social change, reject spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs, shadow attributes, rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels out of peer pressure, or fashion. So if I were pulling cards for characters and this came about in a card, depending on which side of the fence, you know, my character is on. Are they on the antagonist side of the fence? Are they on the protagonist? Or maybe they're kind of in between. Um, and this would give me some information into their character by, based on these cards. I like using these cards to get further character information. I also use regular tarot cards to pull information, say like what career. You can, you can pull tarot cards to help find out what career they have, to find out all different kinds of things about them. I really enjoy using tarot cards for that. The next video, I will pull cards from here and here and a couple of other decks that I have, a fairy deck. I have some other ones. I will pull different cards and show you what I get intuitively from those cards. And then I will look up the meanings of those cards and then tell you what the meanings are for some of the tarot cards for my characters. The tarot cards have really visual images on them and they can give you ideas about about your characters. I find them very interesting as far as like pulling cards and getting information for characters. They really help me intuitively and they open up the door to my imagination and that is very helpful. Um, and yes, I have one of the decks in a crown apple bag. I have several of the bags and sometimes instead of leaving my tarot cards in those really big boxes, if they don't come with a smaller box like this, I'll put them in bags. So, um, thanks for watching. I hope you'll have a great one. I'll see you next Wednesday with more stuff about characters and pulling tarot cards. Bye.